type 2 diabetes is viewed as a disease of sugar, so treatments focus on fixing the sugar problem. There are a multitude of ways to do this. Most of them work, some better than others. So the average type 2 diabetic walks around with, well, okay sugar levels, initially at least. But this is not enough to stop the disease progression. Complications happen. Eye problems, kidney problems, feet problems. Then the sugar levels slowly rise higher and higher. And then a cardiovascular event happens. But type 2 diabetes is so much more than sugar problems. Pretty much every chemical in the body is not quite right. Some are up, some are down. Few are actually at physiologically normal levels. So why don't we pay these anomalies more attention? Well, the current thinking is that the reason that they're wrong is because of the sugar and insulin problem. That is, it's a consequence, not a cause. Now, this may very well be true, but this doesn't mean that they are irrelevant. You see, the body is a system. Everything is connected to everything else. What if? Insulin and glucose are not the central players. What if they're just two links in a complex network of signals? This is a question a group of researchers from India recently asked. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we take a systems approach to type 2 diabetes. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heffalumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, instead of heading to the lab to look for answers, these researchers took a mathematical approach. They constructed a multi-organ, multi-signal, interactive network model. Basically, they gathered all the metabolic disturbances that had been reported to date in the scientific literature and analyzed the relationships, creating a network. The network they created had 72 nodes. When the relationships were, were plotted, it looked like a plate of spaghetti. Mm -mm. Now you know why the system's approach to disease is not the norm. The researchers admit their model is not perfect. But it does reinforce the point. There's more to the story than sugar and insulin. A lot more. When the team fiddled with factors in their network, the effect of the manipulation radiated throughout the network as expected, but the outcome was not completely random. No matter what was tweaked, the system bounced around until it stabilized into one of two outcomes. Outcome 1, the system was insulin sensitive and glucose levels were controlled, that is, it was healthy. Or outcome 2, the system was insulin resistant and glucose levels were elevated. This was quite unexpected. A non-biological system with so many interconnections would behave quite differently. Most of the time it would have become chaotic, suggesting that insulin resistance is a system. This means you don't wake up one morning and find yourself insulin resistant. Lots of little tweaks have happened over a period of time to get you to this state. Now, the path to insulin resistance is personal. Everyone gets there by a slightly different route, thanks to their genes and lifestyle. And when you're there, well, you're there. I won't say you're stuck there, 
but moving to being insulin sensitive is not a one or two step process. It's going to take a lot of tweaks to make that shift to insulin sensitive. A lot of tweaks. This is exactly what our team observed using their model. Moving the needle back from insulin resistant to insulin sensitive was doable, but to do it required a combination of the right interventions. And the more right interventions apply to the situation, the better the response. So, what are the right interventions? Well, the different approaches currently targeted for treatment of type 2 diabetes include reduction in obesity, normalizing plasma glucose levels, and if, and if that's not enough, insulin supplementation. Interestingly, in this model, none of these interventions was able to make the move to insulin sensitivity. Uh, so what was? Well, the team identified several nodes which, when they were turned up or down, seemed to be able to move the needle towards insulin sensitivity on a permanent basis. These included testosterone and estrogen, dopamine, osteocalcin, melatonin, ghrelin, muscle, adiponectin, growth hormone, and serotonin. Interestingly, serotonin is the only one that needed to be lowered. Now, this is a hodgepodge of things. Some you may be familiar with, like testosterone and estrogen. Others, like osteocalcin, you might never have heard of. Most of them are druggable in one way or another. But the point of this video is not to add more meds to the list. Rather, it's about a change of thinking. Type 2 diabetes is a very complex disease. It takes years to develop, and you need to adopt a whole body perspective to manage it. Getting and keeping that sugar down is a priority. But you also need to take aim at the insulin resistance. Contrary to current thinking, insulin is not a knight in shining armor. Too much insulin underlies this insulin resistance. So reigning in insulin is a good place to start. But you also want to take aim at some of the other players. And it's not that hard to do. For example, physical activity can increase testosterone, growth hormone, muscle mass, and osteocalcin. Better sleep can boost melatonin levels, testosterone, and ghrelin. You get the picture. If you're battling prediabetes or type 2 diabetes, you need to do more than normalize your sugar levels. You need to work at optimizing your body chemistry at as many points as you can. This is what it will take to shift your biology to a state of insulin sensitivity. You don't have to get everything right. Just get enough right to shift the balance. In an upcoming series on Better Body Chemistry TV, We'll take a look at some of the chemicals that matter. Be sure to subscribe to our channel if you're curious. Here is the journal article from this week's video. Know someone who's pre-diabetic or has type 2 diabetes. Share this video with them so that they begin to look at their condition from a systems perspective. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.